our final look at FOSS in action takes us to the far corners of the globe. The Galapagos are a set of islands off the coast of Ecuador, where once the only outside visitors were intrepid scientists, including Charles Darwin. They have not been spared the invasion of tourists, who, with the advent of cheaper air travel, have access to greater parts of the globe. But tourists mean money to the local economy. The Galapagos National Park Authority is in charge of tourism on the islands. It registered around 122,000 tourists or visitors in 2005. Of those, the majority were eco-tourists, drawn to the Galapagos for its incredible pristine environment. It's this precious, untouched quality that the National Park is trying to preserve. Galapagos viene a ser un sitio de visita saturado en este momento. La necesidad de tener un manejo controlado de los sitios de visita es, es para nosotros lo primordial, debido a nuestras políticas de conservación. Sin un determinado manejo de los sitios de conservación, nosotros no podríamos lograr conservar este sitio ni tampoco mucho menos preservarlo para las futuras generaciones. The National Park said it recently chose FOSS because of its geographical remoteness and felt they would be better served by their local software developers who were already familiar with PHP open source database software and could develop a database management system tailored to suit their needs as well as saving initial costs and license fees. It's now used by every national park department, including a giant tortoise breeding program, one of the biggest attractions for visitors to the Galapagos. Information which in the not so distant and computerized past would have taken months to process is now at their disposal. And considering that the number of tourists increased by about 20% between 2004 and 5 to over 120,000, it's vital that this information is closely monitored to ensure the survival of the area. At the 2005 UN Summit on the Information Society in Tunisia, delegates convened to address the issue of bridging the digital divide, and free and open source software was what everyone was talking about. Today, open source is a leader in sharing knowledge to everyone's benefit. We offer one of the most effective methods yet tried to achieve the goals of this summit, a productive open source partnership that helps liberate the poor and increases the freedom, knowledge, and well-being of every person. But it's more than 20 years since Stallman started the free software movement, and the digital divide keeps getting wider. So how does the future look for FOSS? How will it fare in the evolution of software? We put these questions to the experts, including representatives of three commercial computer industry giants. Somebody said recently that a modern operating system is far more complicated in terms of the number of components it's got and the number of interactions between them than, say, a jumbo jet. And what we're finding is that, and this may be perhaps the real significance of open source, is that um, these are things that are now so complicated that even vast smart, intelligent, well-resourced companies like Microsoft are buckling under the strain. And my guess is that in relation to open source that we may well find that for many kinds of complex software products, open source is the best way to do it. And how does IBM see the future of FOSS? What we've seen is that over the past few years the adoption of Linux and open source software has accelerated. Linux is the fastest growing server operating system, growing faster than any of the other systems. Other open source software is now starting to be used and it's opening up these possibilities for collaborative innovation between IT vendors, also between IT and universities and individual developers. So it's an idea whose, whose time has come, I think. It appears that even Microsoft also now believes in getting together with the open source community. When we look at the challenges that are faced around the world, we look at the various models that are available to solve those challenges, we recognize there's room for everybody to contribute. And the open source community, again, stimulates innovation in software. It's something that, frankly, we feel very good about. It brings a lot of people into the development community. It generates a lot of innovation around software. And it's something we absolutely see as being a partnership with Microsoft. And Fortune 500 computer hardware and software developer Sun Microsystems are also using open source. I think that we're going to see more and more um, corporations and uh, even smaller businesses turning to free and open source software as their development methodology. 
certainly at some microsystems, we decided a couple of years ago that it made no sense to develop our software in secret, that uh, there was much more to be gained by working with the global crowd of experts than by trying to identify who the real genii were and trying to hire them. So it would appear that there are a number of reasons why FOSS may make life easier for the digitally deprived. There are no upfront costs and therefore no need to be tempted by pirated software. Geeks and non-geeks can create virtual communities to invent new software. Service charges can be the same or steeper than for proprietary software. But in the developing world, where skilled labour is relatively cheap, that is less of a problem. And the adaptability of the software also means that programmes can be written in local languages, the vast majority of which are not catered for in off-the-shelf software. Does that mean FOSS will be the bridge across the divide? No one can say for certain. But what is certain is that the evangelists for free and open source software will not stop singing its praises.